Hey, I'm golf broadcaster Matt Adams, the updated and expanded second edition of my book, The Golf Round I'll Never Forget, Golf's Biggest Stars Recall Their Finest Moments, is now available. Readers can expect to march with Arnie's Army at the 1960 U.S. Open, relive Jack Nicklaus's remarkable 1986 Masters win, and be amazed by the Tiger Slam. The Golf Round I'll Never Forget, Golf's Biggest Stars Recall Their Finest Moments. Pick it up where fine books sold, including barnesandnoble.com and amazon.com. Thrive Suite Productions. And welcome to another edition of This Day in Sports History. It's January 17th, and on this day in 1951, two Manhattan college basketball players and three bookmakers were arrested. It was just the first tremor of a soon to come earthquake that would rock college basketball and nearly destroy it. Manhattan's Henry Pop was one of those arrested on this day. The week prior, he had approached teammate Junius Kellogg, proposing that he help keep the score down in their next game against DePaul on January 16th. Manhattan was a 10-point favorite, but Pop promised Kellogg would receive $1,000 if he helped keep the margin under that. Kellogg was the first black athlete to receive a scholarship at Manhattan and said that prior to this conversation, Pop had been less than friendly to him. But now with this proposition, it seemed like they were best buddies. The offer did not sit well with Kellogg, and he went to head coach Ken Norton and told him about the conversation. Norton went to the college president, who contacted the police and district attorney. Kellogg was requested to go along with a sting operation and pretend to accept the offer. In the game on the 16th, Kellogg was visibly nervous, and after scoring only four points and committing a few turnovers, he was removed from the game. Manhattan won 62-59, and after the game, Kellogg was instructed to go to the meeting place to collect the money, but Pop didn't show. Instead, police arrested him at his apartment early the next morning on the 17th, along with teammate Jack Burns and three bookies. District Attorney Frank Hogan began unraveling a much larger points-shaving conspiracy over the coming months that would eventually lead to 32 players being implicated across seven schools, many in the New York area, but reaching as far as Toledo, Bradley, and Kentucky. Two of the biggest players implicated were Long Island University's Sherman White, who was averaging 28 points that season and was named Player of the Year by the Sporting News, and Kentucky's All-American Bill Spivey, who led Kentucky to the 1951 National Championship. Long Island University suspended all athletics programs for six years due to the scandal, and the NCAA barred Adolph Rupp's Kentucky team from playing the 1952-53 season. College basketball survived, obviously, but it was damaged in the wake of what started with the arrests that happened on this day, 73 years ago. Also on this day, in 1971, the Baltimore Colts won Super Bowl V after Jim O'Brien kicked a 32-yard field goal with five seconds to play to beat the Dallas Cowboys. And in 1999, Gary Anderson missed his only field goal of the season but it came at a very unfortunate moment. The kick would have sent his Minnesota Vikings to the Super Bowl. Instead, the game went to overtime, and the Atlanta Falcons kicked the game winner to claim the spot in Super Bowl 33. That's it for today. When you have a moment, rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts or your podcast app of choice. Thanks for listening. More tomorrow on This Day in Sports History. Hey there, sports history fan. This is Arnie Chapman, a.k.a. the Football History Dude. And I hope that you enjoyed this recent episode presented by the Sports History Network and were able to learn some good old-fashioned sports history knowledge nuggets. I started the Sports History Network back in 2020 with the mission to help podcasters find a community of like-minded sports history nerds as well as helping aspiring podcasters to start their own shows. We have a little bit over 30 shows on the network right now covering all sorts of sports history. But as far as I'm concerned, we're just at the toothpick in the ocean moment. You know that. Can't even figure it out because there's so much more coming. We wanted to create the ultimate headquarters for sports yesteryear, starting with Podcast Network and our website, but we're going to continue to move into other mediums as well. And here's the cool part, because we want you to be part of our team. 
So if you're interested in starting your own podcast, or maybe being a guest on one of our shows, or who knows, maybe even writing an article for us over on the website. Seriously, all you gotta do is reach out to us on the contact page over at sportshistorynetwork.com. You can be as technologically savvy as a Neanderthal tapping on a stone trying to figure out this whole hieroglyphics thing back in the day. Again, it doesn't matter, because even if you don't understand the whole podcast space, we have a production team that can pretty much help you out with doing everything. All you gotta do, head over to sports. HistoryNetwork.com, head to the contact page, fill it out. That message goes right to me, and I'll reach out to you as soon as I can. But for now, dude, I'm through if you're through.